Hey fellow tennis nerds, I wanted to talk about this racket today, a Pro Canix Banana, which is what it's called by my buddy Jan Gajewski. He was kind enough to uh, sell me this one, uh, used but very lightly so, at a cheap price. Thanks John for that and he also shipped me the extended version and the predecessor of two generations back, the black one that he calls Doppio which uh, I could then compare to this one. They're in the same, they're the same racket, but two different generations, which was very interesting for me, an interesting playtest to do. And I have done so now over a couple of weeks and I, here I am with my review and my thoughts around these rackets. As you know, if you've seen my previous Pro Canix Rackets review, where I review this one in the, in the regular weight, the 300 gram version, and I review with the Black Ace Pro, and the Tor version, which is green uh, in the same series. You know, I like Procanix rackets. There are um, pros and cons, obviously. They're the most arm friendly rackets on the market. I would say the Clash is probably in the same category along with some Prince Phantoms. They have the best technology, in my opinion, to filter out vibrations and it's called kinetic. They have these kind of kinetic chambers uh, positioned on the frame where small micro beats move towards the position in the string bit where you hit the ball, absorbing the shock, uh, putting more mass towards the ball. And very interesting te technology that actually works. I've said it before, I'll say it again. I never feel pretty much anything when I'm playing with Procanix rackets and then I pick up a stiff frame and I'll, I'll feel something straight away. My arm is getting slowly better, but it's still not 100% fine. So I do feel when a racket is stiff and when a racket is is well dampened or like this has a technology that's very impressive in absorbing shock. When I play with this racket for a session, I don't feel anything despite putting a, a full bed of poly. The stiffness rating is around 67 with strings, so it's 70 unstrung. That's a pretty high stiffness rating. It shows that the technology here inside really works. The frame as such is 315 grams, 100 square inches. So compared to the one I did before, this one is the Pro option, the Q plus five Pro, uh, meaning that it's heavier, it has a little bit slightly different balance, but pretty much the rest is the same, more or less. 315 grams, 100 square inches, and the big Pro with these frames, in my opinion, the 1620 pattern, I know Jan also likes this, that it has some spin potential, but it mainly gives you a pretty nice, consistent flat ball, a bit of a lower trajectory. 1620 patterns are awesome. I like them on pretty much any, any frame I try them on. 31 centimeter balance, pretty headlight, standard length frame. I also tried the two that I've sent back now, uh, the plus extended version of this one, uh, which was had a very similar feel, a little bit more difficult to maneuver. I always struggle a bit with extended frames. Usually 27.25 works a bit better, but when it comes up to 27.5 inches, I do get a little bit uh, sluggish, slow, especially on the one hand back and I feel like it's a bit too much to swing or it, I just feel like my contact is a bit off. It's my weaker wing, so I need to do more work. I need the racket to help me a little bit. I need the racket to be as close to perfect for that shot as possible. And when it comes to the doppio version that I and a few of my friends tried, that one has a bit of a crisper feel, a more kind of a connected feel in a way than this one. This one is a bit more muted. Otherwise, they're both excellent frames if you like this feel. Uh, but it has a little bit more connection to the ball at uh, the cost of some dampening, but it's still not a harsh frame, but it definitely you feel it a bit more. Uh, while well, this one is, is more dampened. One thing I would say about the string bed here is that when you hit at the top of the hoop uh, somewhere or on kind of the outside, I do really feel like this racket gives you very little in terms of forgiveness. So uh, you definitely need to stay within the center of the string bed if you want a decent shot. Some Babalazzi Onyx and so on, you can hit a little bit outside, they're a bit more forgiving. But with this one, you need to be a bit more precise. I feel like it, it helps to hit the ball a bit more flat. Uh, any kind of outside shots, they feel like you, you lose a lot of power. Not the biggest sweet spot in the history of tennis, but generous enough, I would say. I didn't struggle with it. One thing I want to point out also with this banana series is that the, the swing rate is not shockingly high, but it does have a lot of mass, this frame. So it is a quite tough to maneuver at times. I kind of like this log-like feel where I, I can hit the ball flat and step in. That works for my game. But if you're a whippy player that likes to generate a lot of topspin using maybe your wrist or 
or you know a quite extreme grip I think this one will feel a little bit slow and and be a bit difficult to get through the air uh, that's what Matthew said my buddy Matthew who has a very topspin oriented style semi western grip uh, likes to rip the ball with topspin while I more like want to step in hit across the shoulder with a more flat trajectory so we're quite different so it's interesting when I play with him that he also gives his opinion because he has a very much more modern topspin oriented game using his feet a lot more while I am more you know old man standing there hitting the ball flat and moving to the net because I don't want to hit so many shots uh, but joking aside yes that's that's really the difference in our styles uh, and this one works well for me flat hitters uh, pretty forgiving with 100 square inches but not the most forgiving 100 square inch 100 square inch racket um, Okay on the one-handed backhand, not the most sluggish. Uh, I did prefer the 300 gram a bit more there, perhaps uh, just a bit of a lower static weight, uh, but otherwise it plays very similar. Uh, it's just another very solid frame from Prokenex. Uh, actually very nice at the net. It is quite stable, solid, heavy. Uh, so when you're at the net, it's just very easy to block it back. I do feel no hesitance in I feel no hesitation when I'm at the net. I feel I can just put the racket on the ball and the ball will go where I want it to. Also has pretty good touch. You'd think sometimes these muted frames, they, they offer less good touch. They, they need to absorb vibration and in, in the vibrations you have a lot of information. But with this frame, I feel like I, I can still hit a drop shot. I can hit a drop volley when I'm at the net and I need to kind of just caress the ball somewhere on, in the court. Uh, it, this actually works well with this frame and these Prokenex frames overall. So I must say that this stuff works really well with these bananas and I've been very happy with them. Uh, for a while I thought of switching, I'm not sure 100% if I'm doing that. It does feel a little bit heavy at times. Uh, I like a little bit more whip, a little bit more faster feel. It could be the 100 square inches, could be a little bit more the weight in the head. Obviously I can try to customize that by adding more weight in the handle but still this is the 315 grams so it doesn't allow me as much customization option as the 300 gram but they play very similar it's more up to you whether you like to have a already heavy static weight or you like just a lower static weight with a little bit more weight in the head but they play very close to each other i didn't really feel a huge difference in how these two rackets played and i like them both for the right player they will definitely help you you know from your any potential arm issues you might have, technology 100% works. I'm really happy with this arm friendly tech that they have. What they do do, these frames, is that they have a really nice sound when you hit the ball. It's like really thwack. The, the sound sounds like you're hitting harder than you're actually hitting it. So that part I really enjoy with these Prokenex frames. Just a really nice sound when hitting. It's like a car. You want, a car, you want the car to sound good or sometimes you just want the car to be an electric car and it's uh, completely silent. But generally, if you have a car that's like a Porsche, you want the Porsche to sound good. So maybe you upgrade um, your piping to a Krapovic or something. In this case, there's no upgrade needed. You can just play it as is with a nice explosive sound on impact. But like I said, so the pros, arm friendliness, nice 1620 pattern, controlled for a 100 square inch racket for sure. That's the key things here. Nice stability, it doesn't really have any huge weaknesses. The cons here is the, is the maneuverability. I do feel like this is not a whippy frame. This is a heavy stick, plays with a more flat trajectory, a bit more of aggressive game. If you like to hang around the baseline, you play a lot of play court tennis, you wanna use a lot of topspin. I don't think this is the frame for you. Then there are so many other like extreme arrows, whatever's on the market. But uh, for a flatter player who wants a bit more forgiveness from the 100 square inch head size, but still a controlled launch, this one is very good. If you buy an older generation, that's fine too. They're not as muted, perhaps not as well dampened, but close. A little bit more crisp feel, but they are very good rackets as well. I don't think they, they changed this, the stick completely. Like with all other brands, it's a small incremental changes. They might be an update or an upgrade for you, but it also might be uh, like you feel like you prefer the older generation. But the, the, the update was pretty small. When it comes to the longer length frame, uh, I did enjoy that, but my feeling was that it was a little bit cumbersome. This already has some maneuverability issues. I felt like the extended frame doesn't really improve that situation. So it does play pretty much exactly like this one. A little bit better on serve, obviously. You could actually really thwack the serve. 
but I did feel like I got less control. I had was more to swing around and for my game, it's not great. If you're into extended frames and you want an arm friendly racket, that stick is the one you should go for. It's a very good frame, but if you don't enjoy extended frames, I don't think this one will convince you otherwise. It's just more of what this is. Just a little bit more of what this is, which is usually the case for extended frames. More swing weight, more power, but more difficult to maneuver and less control. Uh, so thanks, Jan. I uh, really enjoy playing with these frames. I love to hit different generations of rackets and next to each other, be able to pick up and really compare and feel the difference in how the racket plays. And uh, I really enjoy doing that with this test. And the Pro Kenex stays with me. And I'm really happy I got this one used at a good price because it's a fun racket to use. And whenever I have arm issues, this is something I definitely gravitate towards. Perhaps it might not be my match frame, but it's definitely a frame that I could play a match with. But it is a little bit slow through the air, even for me who likes a long to swing. So who is this racket for? It's for advanced players mainly. It's a pro and that really shines through because it has a slightly higher swing weight. It is not super maneuverable. But if you like to hit a flatter, aggressive ball and you want a little bit more forgiveness from a bigger head size than perhaps you're used to, this frame should be checked out. And I love the kinetic tech. It actually works. The sound that it makes is not so annoying when you're playing, you don't notice it. And the sound this racket makes when you hit the ball is fantastic. One of the best sounding rackets on the market. I'm not sure if the kinetic tech, tech helps what it is, but it just hits a very nice, it has a very nice sound when you play with it. But definitely for a more advanced player, but even uh, lower level players might check out the lighter versions of the Pro Kenex Kinetic Q Plus 5 Series. Excellent arm friendly frames for all kinds of players. Pro Kenex rackets deserve to be in the spotlight more. They have created a technology that actually works for tennis elbow and I'm gonna keep talking about them when I can for you guys and girls that suffer from tennis elbow arm issues. And this is obviously not the only model they have. They have lots of different models, but as soon as, they, as soon as you see the kinetic tech, you know that there is a high likelihood that your arm will say thank you. Well, that's all for this Pro Kenex Q Plus 5 Pro racket review. I hope you found it useful. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below. I'll look at them. I might add them in my weekly Q&A session or I might reply straight away if I have the time and I see it. If you want to support Tennis Nerd, go to patreon.com slash tennis nerd where you get new content every week. And if there are new racket releases, this is where I put my first impressions about those. If you're keen to know how a racket plays before you buy it, that's the place to check out. If you want to buy a racket, check out my affiliate links, Tennis Warehouse, Tennis Warehouse Europe and Tennis Only in the description below. I also have some other affiliate links there. I only partner with companies and brands and products that I believe in. So if you buy anything from the links in the description below, I get a small commission. That helps Tennis Nerds stay alive. So big thanks if you do. That's all. Have a nice day and don't forget to play some tennis.